wholesale prices to the public. Mention Wally George, okay? Okay, and now, Bill, our last guest. Okay, Wally, here's <coughs> Jerry Cohen. Jerry is a, a Gorby sympathizer, and in looking at him, I think I understand why. Yeah. <laughs> hey, hold on. Hold on. Uh, John, uh, 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 do me a favor, John. I mean, just for the heck of it, would you give me a close-up uh, of my guest here, Jerry Cohen? Take a look at this guy's face. Can you believe this? Jerry Cohen. No. Hey, hey, hold on. No wonder. Hey, hold on, everybody. No wonder he loves Gorbachev. What do you think? Huh? No, hold on, hold on, Jerry. Hold it. You are one of those, obviously, Jerry, in this country, who have been duped by Gorbachev. You believe that this, this animal, this tyrant, wants peace. Do you really believe that? Oh, absolutely, Wally. Oh. He's, he's just like you are. What's that? He's just like you are. Who is? Gorbachev. Oh. Because he's doing the best that he can for his country. Oh, come on. And not only that, think about it. The Americans right now are just like the Russians. Why? Because of a dozen different things. First of all, they're out there becoming capitalists. They're drinking Coca-Cola. You drink Coca-Cola. Do you really think, hold on, do you really think now, tell me the truth, that the Soviet Union has changed. Do you believe Gorbachev when he says that they do want peace in the world? Oh, absolutely, Wally. They, you, you have to see it. They're giving up weapons. They're, they're, hey, we, hey, we hey, have don't, a wait a minute. We wait have a, a balance of trade. Wait a minute. Don't, a positive balance of trade. Don't Russia. move. Don't move towards you're going to break my chair. Whoa! You know, God you have you. absolutely no concept of what's going on. You in the have world no today. concept of what's going on. The hey, the vice president, hold on, the vice president of the United States, Dan Quayle, made a very apt statement. He said, "Don't be fooled." He said, "The godless Soviet Union has not changed." Vice President Quayle said, "The godless, God-hating Soviet Union is the source of evil in the entire world." How do you explain? How do you explain that they have been putting down their weapons? Who has and we been? We have not. Where? We have our where? weapons, and they. Where, where, where have they been putting down their weapons? They gave up almost seventy. Hold it. They gave up almost seventy-two percent of their mid-range nuclear weapons. Oh, come Put on. Put them down in, in Europe? Absolutely. Let me tell and you we this. we gave away nothing. Well, wait, you t what about them giving back Afghanistan to the people? How about... Oh, give me a how break about, with wait, Afghanistan. How about giving... How about... Wait a minute. Well, remember Vietnam? It's just like wait, Afghanistan. How, how about giving back... Only Afghanistan is on their borders. Hold down the audience. And Vietnam was halfway across the world. <laughs> Oh, Afghanistan, Jesus. Give me a break. What, what about this? What about Poland? What about Hungary? What about Czechoslovakia? And I'll tell you, if, if Gorbachev really means he wants peace, then I say, let him knock down the Berlin Wall. <laughs> Hi, how are you, Bill? I'm excellent. How are you? My 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 compadre here is, is that a, what does compadre mean? I don't speak Spanish. Oh, okay. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I think it works. Yeah, compadre. Yeah, compañero, compadre, compadre, compadre hombre, whatever. Yeah. Uh, he's it. And and here he is back with me again tonight. It's impossible. That reminds me of Paris. Ask Como. a baby not to cry. It's just impossible. The king of cool. Yes, indeed, he, he was. Perry Como. An another has left us. 
Now, did you know Perry? Oh, yeah. I thought you might. You know, uh, John Gary, uh, when, when he was dying of cancer, mm -hmm. I, 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 I produced a benefit for him. Oh. And I knew Perry, and John knew, knew Perry, and I called Perry Como way back in Florida. And I said, I'm, I'm putting on a benefit for John Gary. You know, he was dying of cancer mm -hmm. and for his medical bills. And uh, Perry said, I'll be there. Flew out, of course, paid his own way. Flew out, stayed at a hotel at his own expense. Came up on the stage and sang about six, seven songs. Liza Minnelli came. Really? Yeah. You know, but Perry Coleman, he was a very small man. Uh, uh, very uh, slim and mm -hmm. and and, uh, 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 and uh, a short man, mm -hmm. but what a beautiful person, as well as a beautiful singer, and we miss him a lot. Yeah, I think we do. All gone. Yeah. They're all yeah. going now. Frank is gone. Bing. Yeah. All all the all the beautiful singers, the the, the great ones, they're really great. Mm -hmm. But but I can just see now. Harry and Bing and Frank getting yeah. together. <laughs> Jamming. Jamming together. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> well, listen, uh, let's get serious here. All right. And I, wa I want to talk about this. Uh, um, well, we, we were serious then, too. We were seriously serious. Talking yeah. about Perry, we weren't kidding around. No, we but, weren't. But uh, uh, what do you think about, about this 14-year-old uh, um, boy uh, what was his name? Nathaniel Brazil, 14-year-old boy who, who shot his teacher in the head. Yeah. Uh, now. In Florida. And he gets second-degree murder and a chance of parole. You know, and I know you think he should get first-degree murder. And life in prison with no chance of parole. And the thing I got to wonder is, well, I, I mean, this kid is only 14. Yeah, right? but that 14, some, some kids 14 back in Arkansas are married and, and are uh, a expecting children at 14. Well, they should get life in prison, too, then. <laughs> <laughs> well, but, but they do. They get married at 14. I know. But that, but that doesn't necessarily mean that you have it together, that you understand life, that, you know, this I mean, you would This kid is 14 years old. He was mad because he, he got yeah. punished because he was throwing water balloons. Yeah. And then he got disciplined for that. Then he goes home and he, get, he gets a gun. Right. Sticks it in his belt. Yeah. Comes home, goes right to his teacher's room. Yeah. The teacher walks out the door, and he stands right in front of his teacher, mm -hmm. pulls out the gun, aims at his head, and pulls the trigger. And the kid's uh, uh, excuse was, oops, it was uh, a, a, an accident. How do you accidentally pull a gun out, aim it at a guy's head, and pull the trigger? I How is that an accident? I don't think you can accidentally do it, but do you think that at the moment that the gun goes off and blood and who knows what goes everywhere, all of a sudden you have a realization of, wow. I mean, we see people get killed on TV and in the movies, you know, seven or eight or ten times a night probably, and there's no blood and there's nothing. I mean, it, it just all happens kind of in this mysterious fashion that isn't real to us. But when you see really death, blood, guts, but gore, is, but then it's more that? real. So maybe you just got a dash of reality all of a sudden. But what has that got to do with whether he, he should have first or, or well, second degree murder? It ha only in this sense. In that if he sees it on TV and it's not anything real to him, he doesn't really understand. Do He's not me, old enough to get it. Tell me that you, that, that, that you think that, that he could take a gun, go down to his school, aim the gun at his teacher's head and pull the trigger and nothing's going to happen. I don't think he really understood the implication. Oh, baloney! He's only 14. Well, I'm only 17. Well, that's oh. true, but you're not carrying a gun either. No, but Bill, yeah. at 14, you know pretty much you, well, but, what you're going to know for the rest of your life. What's right and wrong, you know at 14. At 14, you know you don't pull out a gun, aim it at your teacher, and pull the trigger. You know that at, at 12 or well, 11. Well, let me give you an example. When I was 14, you I... You pulled the gun out of your teacher? No, no, I didn't do that. Okay. But, but I thought my dad was an idiot. And you pulled the gun on him? No, I didn't pull a gun on oh, him either. Okay. He was, I would have been afraid to do that. Okay. But by the time I was 18, it was amazing how much smarter he'd gotten. 
And he, so, and, and he pulled a gun on you. <laughs> he should have. He probably should have. I deserve that. I'm sure of that. Do you mean to tell me that at 14, you would not have known it was wrong to pull a gun on your teacher? Yeah, I'm brighter than the average bear, And pull the trigger. Well, yeah, I... I was raised in a in a fashion that allowed me to know and understand and respect other people. Know this kid may not have been raised that Do way. Do you want to know something? What? But I really think down deep in deep in my little heart. What? Not only should he have been treated as and and he was tried as an adult. Right. Not only should should he have been tried for first degree murder. Mm -hmm. But I think when he was found guilty, he should have gotten the death penalty. Really. That's what I think. Even at fourteen. At fourteen, he knew what he was doing. Death penalty. Case closed. Wow. Now, I don't know. Bill Bancroft at, at, at Patrol One, One Security, the, they do all kinds of security, any kind you want, right? Well, yeah, except we don't carry guns and kill people. So, oh, I mean, we're, we're, we're trying to hold back on that aspect. But when it comes to protecting people, we do that. You protect them. Big and time. You protect me. Absolutely. And you're still here. And That's right. goodness knows you've had some opinions that may have caused people to oh, yeah. really not you know, feel good about you, but... There are many times I have been protected by you when I didn't want to be. I, I mean, this, <laughs> this girl came running across the room that, and, and threw her arms around me, and you grabbed her and pulled her away. Yeah, I yeah. said, wait a minute! I'll tell you when I want to be protected! <laughs> there isn't such a thing as too much protection. That's right. That's true. Like Georgia Bush's daughter. I was wondering <laughs> if you were going to get to that. Absolutely. Okay. Patrol One Security, thank you, Bill. Thank you, Wally. See you tomorrow. See ya. Bill Bancroft will be back, back tomorrow, and we'll talk about some more stuff. Adults only, please. Your secret fantasy is just a phone call away. Call me now. Now it's all the way down. Shh, shh. Quiet it down. David, our next okay. victim on the hot seat. <laughs> next up tonight, we have Adam Smith, who is here to defend... He's here to defend Oral Roberts and his latest campaign to collect four and a half mil. Because God told him so, I believe. Now, hold it. No. All right, now, Adam, I want to ask you, how in the world did you have any kind of brains in your mind at all, which I doubt, in your head there, how can anybody defend Oral Roberts? I mean, he has really hit an all-time low now. When he says, can you believe this, that God told him, unless he raises four and a half million dollars by the end of March, that God is going to kill him. Oh, come on. I say, I say that... I say that is a disgusting way of begging for money, don't you? Yeah! 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 Now, Adam, I want to know, how can you possibly defend Oral Roberts in this shameful thing that, that he has done? Wally, it, it's very simple, Wally. Uh, there's such a thing as a constitution in this country, and such a thing as the First Amendment which guarantees uh, freedom of religion. And there is such religion. a thing as sanity, and obviously you and Oral don't have any. Well, I may not agree with Oral Roberts, and you might not agree with Oral Roberts, but in this country, he has the right to practice his religion in any way that he feels is right. And it's none of your business what Oral Roberts says. <laughs> yes, it is. Yes, yes, there certainly is a reason for people to complain. He goes on the air, and he has command of millions of viewers who watch him on his television ministry every single week. Isn't that, isn't that their free will? No, but he has a responsibility to those people. And I say, even ministers in this country have, have caught up in this thing in anger Ministers have denounced, even people in his own congregation have denounced it. Then how can you defend it? This because is the he has the right to say it. He doesn't have the right to people say it. People have fought and died on battlefields to protect the Constitution. So that, he, so 
show that he does, in fact, have the right to say it, to uphold the Constitution of this country, which I'm sure you support. But you can't go on, I think, you can't go on you're, television and... and you're, running, you're running for office. You should know something about the Constitution. You can't go on on television, nobody can, and try to tell people who trust in you that God would do such a ridiculous thing. Now, you know... Maybe he believes that God actually told him that. Isn't that his private business, his private relationship with his own Lord? I am saying this. What he has done by this ridiculous thing is he has hurt other legitimate television ministries, has he not? Yeah. How can he be doing that? If anything, he makes them look better in comparison. Do you, do you really believe, Adam, do you really believe that God would come to anybody and say, unless you raise X amount of dollars, I'm going to kill you? Well, do you believe God would do never, that? He never told me that, but I sure don't know what's in Oral Roberts' mind. Well, you see, even, even some of his own ministers have called this emotional blackmail. Do you believe in that? No, I don't, Wally. I believe in his right to practice his ministry in any way that he chooses, whether it agrees with what's in the Bible or not. Well, no, that, no, that isn't true. People who go on, people who go on public airwaves have the obligation to be honest and not try to mislead their viewers. I could go on the air right now all across America and I could say that God has spoken to me and God told me that if I didn't raise five million dollars in two months, my show would go off the air. I could say that. You sure could. And, but I, but, but I, but I, wouldn't do that because I have integrity and Oral Roberts does not. And I want to tell you this. What do you want to do? Pass a law against it? Yeah! I want to pass a law that people who go on the public airwaves certainly should not be misleading people the way Oral Roberts. David, do you have anything to say on, on that? Well, now you're just defending his right to, to say it. Not that you don't really believe the I thing anyway. I didn't send him any money, did you? Yeah. Now, uh, <laughs> supposing, yeah, I sent him a dollar. I don't want him to die. Oh, now, okay. What's, uh, <laughs> what's going to happen on April 1 if he's still alive and he didn't collect his four and a half million? Is he going to have to I, lie about it? I guess he'll look, I guess he'll look pretty stupid, but yeah. that's his right too, isn't it? I say, I say that, <laughs> I say that. Maybe oral, he'll take his own life. I I say that Oral Roberts has the obligation to go on his television broadcast and apologize to all of his followers across this country. I'll be right back. We are 18.com. Now it's time for our final guests, and, and we have a couple of girls here who are in favor of free ladies' nights at cocktail bars, and they're also in favor of bikini and hot leg contests. <laughs> So, so here are our final two guests, Michelle Hess and Trish Yard. Here they are. Everybody, now, you, now you uh, are you are Michelle Hess right here on my right, and, and you're Trish Yard. Okay. Now, first of all, you girls, I, I understand, are are here primarily to defend the fact that that you, that you think that bars, cocktail lounges, should have free ladies' nights where they should admit women free and have lower prices for women. I, I say that's wrong. That's, I say that's discrimination. Wait a minute. I say that's discrimination against us men. Wait, boys. First of all, first of all, 
in. It's winners of all. Us women, we go to the bars, we get the discount prices, we get in for free. We're there. You guys get to buy us drinks. The drinks cost half price. Oh, wait a minute. Okay, wait. That's okay. We these work men, hard. These men know we're going to be there. These men know that the women are going to get in free, and that's where they're going to be. So that's where the men are going to be. Why should hold it? Why should you get in for nothing? I mean, what what's the main reason for that? Okay, we work hard all week. We're going to school all week, all week, and what's what's the big deal if we get a few dollars off why on the price of admission? And we're going in to have a good time, relax, and have fun, and have a good time, and have a few dollars off the drinks and the price that we pay. Why shouldn't why shouldn't why shouldn't the men? Wait, there's drink prices all week long for everybody in every different bar. If there's happy hour or whatever price it is, ladies' night out, they get in. They get in for, for the men. The men who are buying the drinks maybe. are going to be giving, getting these discounted prices for these women. The men are buying the drinks. They're wait, getting wait, discounted prices. Also, the whole idea is to get the women into the club, to bring the men into the club, but wait a for the club to make money for that. That's discrimination water. against men. I say you're oh, saying there's you're no discrimination at all. The only thing that is if you're discriminating against there's no discrimination at all. We're getting a few dollars off. Some guy like you comes along, screams at discrimination, and ruins the fun for everybody. Yeah. Let me get this straight. Your argument is that women should be admitted free because you bring in the men to the club, right? Exactly right. Well, exactly I say, right. I say, exactly. I say well, wait a minute. Wait we a don't minute. exactly bring in the men, but the men are there. And the, we men know to we're there. In, the men know where the women are going to be. Let me ask exactly. you on that. Go. We get a free roast, we get free admission, and maybe a couple of dollars off the drink prices. It's really no big deal. But wait a minute. And it's wait, 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 a drink. wait a minute. Big mouth, wait a minute. If it wasn't, if it wasn't for us men, you wouldn't be in the club, so we should get in free, too. What's that? Well, why exactly do you guys go out? Just to have a couple drinks and just... Just have a slug yeah. out a couple beers and, and a couple go on home. Well, why do you go out? Why do you go out? Yeah, we want to go out, yeah, we we want to go out have a couple too. drinks. We don't yeah. go out just because those men are going to be there. You even just because those guys think that's the only reason we have a right to go out. Well, I say this. We got to be fair about this. And I say if you're going to get... Uh, fair about it. Everybody gets those drink prices. Every single person that goes in the club gets those drink but prices. It, but we're calling it ladies' night, maybe having a male uh, chess contest or something like that, and it draws in the ladies and to get a free drink or a drink prize special. Well, I say I speak up for men's liberation. We want equal rights. <laughs> for a long time. It's time to now I around us. Now, I understand that you two are also big supporters of bikini and hot... You're big supporters of bikini contests and hot legs contests. Why not? Why not? Why can't we make a little money off of them? That's have you right. In these contests, these contests keep us in shape. Wait, do you girls... We go to school, we Hold work, on. we work out. These contests, they pay for... If we win, like... If we win the contest and we get the money, it's usually three to five hundred dollars a week we make. And these, the money Wait goes for rent, it goes for car payments, it goes for books for school. Good competition. It brings them in, it brings in customers, it helps exactly. out the bar. Everybody's right. happy. Everybody's happy. Everybody's having is a good time. Is it my understanding? The only one that's not happy is you radical conservative. All right. Is it my understanding that you girls engage in those contests? Yeah. yeah. Oh. <laughs> How do you feel when you walk around in, in these clubs with all these guys staring at your naked bodies? They're not naked! They're not naked! We're not naked! The, the crowd is 
what gives us most of the support. Wait a minute, but... The crowd gets the crowds support. behind us. Everybody's having a good time. But don't you... There's no harm done in going out and doing this. But... George. I love the way he does that every night, Hoshi, that introduction. He's so full of, uh, of energy where he says, and now, here he is, the one and only, Willie George. <laughs> Someday we should, he'll do that just to throw me for a loop. Isn't it amazing he drives down here every night just yeah. to do that, o that opening announcement, and, and, then, and then goes home again. Yeah. He gets out of bed, comes down here, reads the opening uh, introduction, and he does it amazingly the same every night. And then he gets... Women's out. fantasies, wild desires. Dial 1-800-934-9100. Party live, one-on-one. -on -one. Dial 1-800-934-9100. Get personal contacts for personal dreams. Mercy and conservatism. The most talked about and imitated talk show host on television. The one and only... Wally George. Okay, thank you very much. Uh, welcome, everybody. Here we go with our Thursday edition of Hot Seat Highlights. I'm here every night at this time, 1 o'clock, Monday through Friday. Saturday nights, of course, from 11 until 12, as always. It's the Hot Seat Show with my live studio audience all across the nation on the Wally Network. 165 cities nationwide, internationally via satellite. As I sit here with the American flag over my shoulder and I tell it the way it really is. I, Wally George, your fearless leader. I've been here for 12 years now behind this desk. And uh, KDOC TV Channel 56 in Anaheim, our home base. Find out how. Yes. Call toll free. Imagine right now you can talk live with up to eight friendly people who want to meet you. It's fun. It's One and only, Wally George. It's Monday, right? Hey, here it is, a Monday, start of a new week. And welcome, everybody. I am Wally. As you probably know, did, have you put that big name thing uh, across there, Jeff? Wally George. I love that. I love to look at my own name. Not that I'm an egotist. <clears throat> well, maybe I am an egotist. <laughs> I can't think of any name I like better than my own, especially when I can see it on television. But I'm very humble. My favorite show is my own, but I'm very humble. Right, Hoshi? Yes. You would never find a more humble person, even though I do believe that I am probably the most talented talk show host ever to grace the airwaves, I'm also very humble. <laughs> Here's something great. Hoshi, you're going to love this. Mayor Marion Barry, you know, was re-elected, or was elected mayor of Washington, D.C., the guy who spent time in jail for uh, smoking crack cocaine. Anyway, uh... He says, Marion Barry says, he and Bill Clinton have formed a partnership. Oh, boy, that's the greatest partnership I've ever heard of. Pot smoking Billy and cocaine puffing Marion. Boy, there's a partnership for you. Maybe they're going to get together behind closed doors and smoke away, puff away. I couldn't believe the headline. Barry says he and Clinton have formed a partnership. <laughs> Hello, Bill. This is Marion. Feel like getting high? <laughs> Hello, Bill. This is Marion. Your office or my office? <laughs> See you in 10 minutes. I got the stuff. Clang. <laughs> I'm going to get letters on that. I'm going to get letters. Barry, a former three-term mayor who served a six-month prison term for cocaine possession in 1991, said he offered the president some very good advice. <laughs> I'm sure he did on how to do it and not get caught. <laughs> offered him some, some advice. Now, now, here's another thing. 
that I am very happy to see in the state of California. Good old Bill uh, Pete Wilson signed the bill that went into, into effect January the 1st, in case you folks didn't know about it. A new state law is now in effect as of January 1 that bans smoking in all indoor workplaces and most restaurants. Now that's the, the phrase that Hoshi and I are wondering about. Why most restaurants? Are they going to give some restaurants uh, favoritism, or are they going to let this one smoke and this? Why? I mean, I don't. That's like being a little bit pregnant. Uh, I mean, come on. Now, if if you're going to have uh, a ban for, for smoking in all indoor workplaces and most restaurants, that doesn't make any sense to me. It's got to be in all restaurants or no restaurants. You can't say most restaurants. What does that mean? Who's going to decide? which restaurants will uh, allow smoking and which uh, uh, restaurants cannot allow smoking. I mean, that doesn't make any sense. Governor Pete, that needs a little refining. No restaurants is the way it should be. We can't have favoritism now. Now, do I have time for, for not one more issue? This is the last one, too. Boy, we really played it safe today, this week. Now, there are some Republicans uh, who are talking about the Republican platform. And they are saying abortion is a political issue. And they think the Republicans should back away uh, from the abortion issue at the Republican convention in 1996 uh, that will be held right here in, in Southern California in San Diego. Did you know, know that, Hoshi? They're going to have the Republican convention in in uh, San Diego. Now, I don't like that, saying abortion is a political issue. It's not. Abortion is a very serious issue, indeed. And we Republicans, for years and years and years, have stood firmly against abortion. And to back away from that now would be a serious mistake, in my opinion. The Republican Party believes most, I would say, the majority of Republicans believe that abortion is murder. It is the killing of little unborn babies, little unborn human beings. We Republicans have believed that for a long, long time. And now to, to say it is a political issue and we should back away from it, that's, that's chicken. You know what? <laughs> no, 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 no. We don't back away from it. We meet it head on. I say we go to the Republican convention and let someone like Bob Dornan or Pat Buchanan stand up there and say, as Ronald Reagan stated, as Republican after Republican has stated, we are against abortion. We want to reverse Roe versus Wade. We want to make abortion illegal in the United States of America. Like it used to be. Like it used to be. That's right, Hoshi. It used to be. Uh, until the, the uh, liberally slanted Supreme Court ruling on Roe versus Wade uh, made it legal. And now I say we go back to the way it should be. And for the Republicans who are now saying we should back away from this in the 1996 issue, we aren't like that. We don't back away from the stands that we have made firmly in the past. Why do you think Ronald Reagan was so strongly elected and re-elected in landslide proportions? Because Ronald Reagan stood before the American people and said what he thought. And Ronald Reagan was advised not to bring up abortion in his campaign. It was too controversial, and there were too many people who might vote against him, and he might lose the election if he stood up for abortion. And Ronald Reagan, that strong Irishman, said, no, I believe this way and I am going to tell the people the way I say and he went into those to both campaigns 
with guns blazing, saying what he felt about all issues, including abortion. And did it hurt him? Did it hurt him that he said, I'm against abortion, it's wrong, it's killing babies? Did it hurt him? He, run, he, he won two elections in landslides. So in 1996, the Republican candidate should carry on in the Reagan tradition, in the true Republican condition, the true Republican tradition. Right? Right. Okay. Take a little break, come right back, and we'll do some highlights from the past 12 years of hot seats. Stay there. in safe condition. You know, mowing safety starts with good, well-maintained equipment. And take a walk around the lawn. Pick up any objects that could be thrown by the mower blade. And dress properly. Loose or baggy clothing can get caught in the controls. Safe mowing also requires proper footwear. Mowing safety. It only takes a moment. If there's racing at the track, there's racing on KDOC. Every night, Wednesday through Sunday at 8 p.m., catch all the day's racing action from Santa Anita with all the stats and results from each race. Not just the stretch drive, not just the highlights, all the races, all of the race from the gate to the finish line. So tune in each night, Wednesday through Sunday at 8 p.m. to 56 KDOC, your station for horse racing. On the outside, my private craze, please pause, Paul and Marla are going to hit the wire together. In most American cities, you can find some sort of gang activity going on each day after school. Sometimes it starts out with sticks. Beatings take place. And random shots are usually fired. The Salvation Army programs for youth, giving kids a fighting chance. All right, now, David, it's time for our next victim okay. on tonight's hot seat. Moving from the newspaper business to the gutter, we <laughs> yeah. have, we have the, the co-chairman of the Adult Video Association, Perry Ross. All right, now, now Perry, I want to tell you this. How you can sit there with that stupid smirk on your face? I just want to tell you, you perverts should be put out of business because you and, and your other people in the adult video association, yeah. why don't you call it what it really is? Porno trash, right? I say in this decent, moral America, you guys should be thrown out of business. Yeah. And how do you answer that? Unfortunately, Wally, According to Time Magazine, in 1986, 104 million adult videos were rented. I don't That's believe that. That's a lot of Americans. That. Do you That's believe a fact. That? That's a fact. The only people you appeal to, my friend, are the degenerates and perverts of America. You know, I'm glad you brought that up, Wally, because there are a lot of people in this country that want to make and a something decision. Else I'm, Look, I, can let me just finish, okay? There's oh, a lot of people. Oh, there's a lot of people in this country. There's a lot of people in this country that do not like the type of movies that the Adult Video Association puts out. Including me. I, I, that's fine. I'm sure some of these people feel the same way. But as Americans, they have the right to make that decision under their First Amendment rights. And as Americans, we have the right to decide what is moral and decent and what should be thrown in the ash can. Yeah. Thank you. 
Yeah, yes, David. Think, think, what a, think what a much nicer, cleaner, more decent country this would have been if those 104 million things hadn't been produced. Yeah, right on. <laughs> There are a lot of people in this country that deserve to have that right, and that's what we're talking about. Right now, the federal government wants to take your rights away and your rights away in reference to renting this material. Hey, I want to take your citizenship rights away. What do you think about that? You know what? Hey, the only reason you love this, this business so much is this guy's married to a porno star, aren't you? Aren't you? Wally, the issue here... Wait, answer okay. aren't you? Yes, What's I most certainly am. I most certainly am. How, wait, wait, the wait, issue wait, is wait, here... Wait, 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 Wally, let me just say something. The issue is not who I'm married to, what kind of movies I make. We're an $8 billion business. We're an $8 billion business, according to the United States government. People have the right in this country to do whatever they like behind closed Don't doors. Don't yell at me. As long as I'm not yelling. So he's just, yelling, isn't he? No, I am not. You're yelling at me. People in this country have Talk the right. Talk to me. People have the right in this country it's to better. do whatever they like behind closed doors. And once you let the government in your bedroom to take away your privacy, in five years from now, your show will be edited before it even hey, hits I, the air. I have news for you. If the government ever looked in your bedroom, you'd probably wind up in jail. Yeah. If the government ever looked in my bedroom, they'd see John Wayne movies, okay? Oh. <laughs> they'd see current events, and every once but in a while... But what about your wife's movies? Wouldn't they watch that, too? Yeah. My wife, my Why wife is in a business. My wife, my wife is in a business. She's an adult, and that's the profession she's chosen. Whether I agree with it or not, she still has the right to do that as well. Well, I would not allow my wife to be in that kind of business, would you? <laughs> and I would fight for your right to make that decision. All right, look, look. you know what? The, the whole thing that is wrong with this is, is the kids are getting a hold of these videos and they're seeing your filthy garbage smut, and I say that's wrong. You are perverting and psychologically damaging many Americans. Right. I, have, I agree with you that children should not get a hold of this. That's why in every video store there is a special section and no one under the age of 18 is allowed. I see kids in there all the time, don't you? Know you know what's sad? Do you know what's sad, Wally? What's sad, what's sad is that the horror section is for anybody who wants to walk by it. Splatter oh, no. movies, what's sad? Wait, wait, wait. and no. murder movies. No, what's sad? That's what's sad. What's sad is that you were ever born. Yeah. Wally, and I defend your right to say all these things. That's what this country is all about, Wally. Freedom of speech, freedom to make choice. That's what the government's trying to do. Take this away from but us. But we have the right in America to, to take yes, out... you do. And, ...and to stamp out filth yes, you and do. garbage and, and pornography. And if you want to stamp out filth, as you call it... And garbage and pornography, and pornography. Whatever you choose to, don't go to the video store and go into the adult section. Yeah. Don't do that. No, no. The way to do it is to pass a law in the United States of America making your kind of garbage illegal in, in the United States. <laughs> In order to pass that law, you have to have voters. There are not enough voters. The majority oh, wants these oh, movies. Oh, really? That's okay. Let's take yes, a little vote. Is. How many of you vote to put him out of business? Yeah. Wait, wait, wait. How many of you oppose? You're out of business. <laughs> they represent the... They are, are a cross-section of America, so they want you, you out of business. You a cross-section of America. Aren't you a cross-section of America? Yeah. They want well, government. all you need now is another 55 million votes, and perhaps you could do something about it. But you know what? We're here because people want us here. Do you want him here? People want us here in this business, Wally. That's a fact. That is a fact. If people don't want something, it doesn't exist. It exists. If there's not a market for something, then it will not be here. The whole we are bigger and stronger than ever before. With all the government oppression, there are more people renting adult video cassettes now than ever before. Bigger in history. And, he says he's bigger and stronger than ever before. He's dirtier and filthier than ever before. Yeah. To put you to put you out of business, you say we'd be giving up a little freedom. That would be well worth the price. No, I'm not saying you'd give up a little freedom. You should have the right to put me out of business. The government's not giving you that right. The government's trying to do it, and they don't have the votes to do it. You're not just a porno producer. 
Why don't, you, why don't you really label yourself what you guys really are? You're nothing more than glorified pimps, aren't they? And what is... Wally, what Wally, is wait, wait, Wally, wait, hold Wally, on. Wally, wait, wait, no, Wally, wait, wait, Wally, wait, wait, Wally. wait. You just called me a pimp. That's Wally. right. A pimp is somebody that takes money from a woman. I don't take money from women. The people in our industry are consenting adults who make a good living, who choose to do it, who sign releases, and who flock to this industry just like they do what to Hollywood. Do, what do pimps do? They lure people in, girls in, to perform acts of sex. What do you do? You lure girls in to perform acts of sex. You're a pimp and it's prostitution. Yeah! How do you answer that? We don't lure anybody and there are several modeling agencies that place ads in newspapers. Consenting adults read these ads, they come in and they decide, yes, I want to do this. At that point, they're interviewed like anybody else. They make a decision as an adult, and they go into this okay. business as an adult. I've made a, de a decision right now, as a matter of fact. You're out of here! Nobody does it better than Clearview Products, an amazing selection of windows and doors at equally amazing prices. Clearview is the number one Anderson window truckload dealer in Southern California. For beautiful windows and doors, it's Clearview Products serving all of Southern California. They have the largest inventory and you'll get the best deal possible. Mention Wally George for a special bonus discount for a limited time only. When there's something on your mind, and it's hot, stimulating conversation, call Lisa. She knows what you're looking for. Just dial 1-800-509-LISA. It's only $3.99 a minute. And get this, you don't need a credit card. Of course, for adults only. So call Lisa for live, one-on-one, -on -one stimulating conversations at 1-800-509-LISA now. You don't need a credit card. I want to talk very seriously to you men out there who are making plans for a divorce. A divorce is never pleasant, but if there's no other way, men, you need an attorney who specializes in father's rights. I'm talking about Michael Brennan, attorney at law, author of Custody for Fathers. Michael Brennan will give you the proper representation you need. He is a specialist in father's rights. Call Michael Brennan today. A person and a dog teaming up to overcome obstacles. It's the everyday story of a blind person and a guide dog. And the law permits guide dogs everywhere that's open to the public. To learn more, call the Guide Dog Foundation for the Blind, toll free, 1-800-548-4337. The Loudon Gang rides to the rescue. This is an emergency. We'll egg you to kingdom come. On New Heart. New Heart. New Heart. <laughs> We're back. Wally George here for our final guest now on the hot seat. And David, let's well, <laughs> this no, is, okay. from, the, from the ridiculous to the more ridiculous. I don't know what we're going through this time. Okay. But anyway, this is Al Greenwood, who is known as the bedspread king. I don't know why. But he's running for president of the United States. President! Oh, yeah. The, the bench, oh. Well, I, I, hello, I, Mike, Al. Uh, hello? You're fine. Okay. Well, I am a bench bread king, but I'm going to run for the president, for, uh, presidency of the United States. Hey, first of all, you, you better run for, for the funny farm. What do you oh. think? <laughs> <laughs> well, well, with your stacked audience here, I can't win anyway. So, uh, I'll, uh, I'm running for the uh, president of the United States, and it's going to be... Why are you doing that? You have no chance, Al. Because I'm going to do the country some good. Oh. <laughs> All right. Hey, 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 Al, hold it. Hey, hey, hold it. Hold it. You say that you have some new ideas. G give me one or two of your new ideas, well, Al. In the first place... Don't touch the microphone, Al. Okay. <laughs> it, it, it's bombed, I think. It, uh, okay. What are some uh, of your new ideas? Well, in the first place... <laughs> In the first place, my campaign will be one of complete candor and openness. If I have any dates with shady ladies, you'll be the first to know. Oh. Hey, hey. 
Hey. Hey, the day, the day you have a date with any lady will be the day that Gary Hart is admitted to a monastery. <laughs> to take that. You don't think I'm capable of having dates or hey, what? Hey, listen, huh? you, you say that... <laughs> hey, speaking of... <laughs> hey, I understand that, that part of your campaign, you, you want to have gambling in the, in the White House? Well, it's true. Uh, uh, why do you want gambling in the White uh, House? I'll tell you why. Because we're going to uh, change the United States of America into big business. We're going to incorporate the United States of America and everyone will receive a dividend check. And you guys better be nice to me or you won't get your dividends oh. yet. <laughs> hey, what, what about, I understand that you want to change the Navy. How are you going to change the Navy, well, Al? Very simple. Hurry up, uh, Al. Oh, all right, okay. Uh, uh, in order to uh, pay for running a big business like the United States have incorporated uh, and everybody getting dividend checks, Every facet of the government will be a self-sustaining, money-making unit. And we're going to turn the Navy into a money-making unit by thinking about uh, the juror and how to... Call Lisa. She knows what you're looking for. Just dial 1-800-509-LISA. It's only $3.99 a minute. And get this, you don't need a credit card. Of course, for adults only. So call Lisa for live, one-on-one -on -one stimulating conversation. Very much so. Um... But I, I, when I was younger, I already knew, I didn't know. The endless life. The LA Times says, suddenly, the Democrats are looking to Al Gore for leadership. The man once seen as dull has gained new luster in a party desperately seeking to recover from the November landslide that shook the White House and put the Republicans in control of the House and Senate. So suddenly, they're looking for leadership to Al Gore. <laughs> I'll tell you, he's not much much better than Bubba. I, I've heard Al Gore. Have you ever, ever heard Al Gore speak? I, I, I went to an Al Gore speech one time during the campaign just to see what he was like. And I'll tell you, I was glancing around the room and about 25% of the people there had dropped off to sleep. I mean, this guy is, is duller than Clinton. He drones on and on and on and on in the same monotonous tone. And he never changes his expression, never changes the way he's talking, and you just boom. So I don't know why they're turning to Al Gore for leadership. Unbelievable. Speaking of uh, the presidential, oh, before I do anything else, let me tell you this. 99 birthday wishes to George Burns. This is a little, a little belated, but uh, better late than, than never. I want, now I hate to drop names. You know me, Jeff, I'm very humble and I rarely drop names, right? Right. But I do know George Burns. I, I interviewed him several times when I was a disc jockey uh, many years ago. And I, I went over to his office at General Service Studios in Hollywood. Uh, and I was only supposed to have like a 10-minute interview with uh, George. And I got about an hour with him. He is just one of the greatest, funniest, nicest people I have ever met in this business. And I've met a lot of people in this business. Uh, luckily for me, I, I've been in long enough that I've bumped into uh, some of the true greats. But I've never bumped into a nicer man, a funnier man, a greater entertainer than George Burns. And this is a beautiful ad, a full-page ad in the Los Angeles Times. And I understand it was in other papers. cost a lot of money. 
And do you know who put this ad in? Way over here is a, a small little reminder of who put this in. Very smart advertising. This was put in by 99 cent only stores. Jeff, have you, have you ever heard of those stores, 99 cents only? Yeah, well, little tiny, the only thing that you, the only way you would know that this was put in by 99 cent only store is, is if you see this little tiny thing right here. The rest of the full page ad is George. I think, I think that's clever. So we wish him well, and we hope he's gonna last to be, to be 100 so he can celebrate his 100th birthday as planned at the London Palladium, where he was booked for that 10 years ago. You know, 10 years ago when uh, the London Palladium booked George Burns for his 100th birthday party, it was done mainly in jest. Nobody ever, ever thought George was going to hang around this long. And he's only got about another 11 months to go, and he's going to turn 100, and I am putting my money on, uh, on George that he is going to make it to his party at the London Palladium, and he will see his 100th birthday in show business. How long have I gone, Jeff? Four minutes. Okay, I can talk a little bit more here. You know, they say that I don't like any Democrats. A lot of people, a lot of times, I'm sure you, you've heard me, uh, people say that, well, Wally George doesn't like anybody. Pardon me, I hate to, I just I did a little burp there. Pardon me, folks, this is live television. People have, have accused me of not liking any Democrats. I have never, they say, I have never said a kind word about any Democrat, ever. Well, you're wrong. There's one Democrat that I've, that I've known for a long time, and I like him, and I could even see myself voting for him sometime. And his name is Gray Davis, who is now the Lieutenant Governor of the state of California. Now, I've had Gray on my hot seat show three or four times, and on my different radio shows. And Gray and I, of course, don't agree on anything practically, politically. But he is such a nice guy. I mean, it is almost impossible to dislike Gray Davis. I mean, look at that nice face. I ran into, uh, ran into Gray in a restaurant uh, about a year ago, and he left his table and came over to me and said, Hi, Wally, how are you doing? Smart politician. Not that he really loves me that much, but he's a smart politician. And he wants the press to uh, like him. And, and, and I, I really think that uh, down deep inside, he is a nice guy. Because I've talked to him at length. And uh, you never know. I, I haven't voted for him yet. I didn't vote for him for lieutenant governor because I did not want to have a Democratic lieutenant governor and a Republican governor. But uh, I'm not overwhelmingly... Uh, horrified over the fact that Gray Davis is our lieutenant governor. And if Gray happens to be watching the show tonight, I want to have him back on the show, Jeff, where we'll have to get a hold of him, and we can have a, have a little talk. I have tried to argue with, with Jeff, uh, with <laughs> uh, Gray Davis, on my hot seat show, you know, and he just won't let me get him angry. He just, when I start pounding my fence and saying, but Gray, what about this? Then he just leans back in his chair and he starts to giggle. And he laughs, now, now, Wally, don't get all excited. And he just won't let me get him steamed. <laughs> he's, a, he's a good guy. A nice man. Now, uh, now, you see, I have said something nice about a Democrat. So there. Well, guess who has taken his first step towards a presidential race? Right. Senator Bob Dole of Kansas. The Senate Majority Leader prepares for a possible run by establishing a campaign committee. All but eliminating any lingering doubt that he would run for president in 1996, Senator Bob Dole of Kansas on Thursday announced the creation of a presidential exploratory committee and said he planned to announce his decision in late March, early April. 
Well, I think that's just a formality. Bob Dole is off and running. Also, in the news, you, you may not have seen it, they had a small article in, in some of the papers last week where Dan Quayle uh, is now going to make a, a public announcement that he is running for president in 1996. Now I can hear giggles and guffaws uh, all over the place, people watching this show saying, oh, Wally, you know he hasn't got a chance. They said exactly that, the same exact words about Ronald Reagan when he was running for governor. They said, he's just a, a has-been B-grade actor. He could never become governor of California. Two terms, right? Then he ran for president. Same things coming from all over the country and the press. This is a joke. The people in this country will never elect an, a, an actor to be president of the United States. Really? Two terms. Landslide victories. When Richard Milhouse Nixon lost the election to John F. Kennedy for president, and then he came back to California and ran for governor in his home state and lost, they said he was finished. Really? Well, he ran for president again and won. Two terms. So, Dan Quayle says, I'm going to run for president. And you know what? There's going to be a lot of laughs, same kind of laughs and giggles and guffaws, but it wouldn't surprise me one single bit to see Dan Quayle sitting in the Oval Office in 1996. Why? Image. So many people in this country vote for image. And Dan Quayle is a nice man, a humble man, a religious man, a devoted husband to his wife and family, standing for family values, a complete change from who we have in the Oval Office now. A complete, complete change. And I think that people are ready for a decent human being to represent us in the Oval Office, to lead us. And I wouldn't be surprised at all to see Dan Quayle come from behind, get the nomination, and win. They said Reagan couldn't do it. They said Nixon couldn't do it. And they did. Now they're saying Dan Quayle can never do it, and he might. Remember, you heard me say it first. I'll be right back. Stay where you are. Be safe, not sorry. Call the anti-crime line on your screen right now. Don't be a crime victim. Call the anti-crime line right now, 1-900-844-SAFE. You'll get inside tips on how to prevent mugging, carjacking, robbery, rape, mall crime, and shopping crimes. Just $1.99 per minute, and you must be 18 or older. Call now the anti-crime line, the number on your screen. This may be the most important call you'll ever make in your life. It may not look like it, but you're watching the future of the Earth pass by. Because many of these products are made from materials you've been recycling. But to keep recycling working, you need to buy products that say, made from recycled materials. For all those next in line, it would mean the world to them. through her brain. Who is this guy in her bathroom? Meanwhile, Barry was thinking, whose bathroom am I in? Janine remembered going to the party the night before and getting smashed out of her mind. Barry remembered getting drunk and acting really stupid. Eventually. The whole evening came back. 
Oh, I must be really stupid. I must be really dumb. What did I do? How did I get myself into this? Well, what did I do? How did I get myself into this? What about... What about... What about AIDS? Then they both realize, much to their relief, that unlike the rest of us... They were just cartoons. Get high. Get stupid. Get AIDS. David, this should be kind of interesting. Our final guest on the hot seat. Okay, uh, next up we have the Harlem Warlord. going on right on your telephone. It's America's ultimate party line, and it's what everyone's talking about. Try it now. Find out how. Call toll-free. Imagine right now you can talk live with up to eight friendly people who want to meet you. It's fun, it's exciting, and you can try it now. Find out how. Call toll-free. Don't be shy. You can listen in until you hear someone you want to talk to. Then say hello. It's that easy. Try it now. Find out how. Call toll-free. Adults over 18 only. Billy, what's wrong? I can't get this map. Never before in America and in no other country in the world has it been easier to get top grades in math. How? The answer is Math Made Easy videotape. Basic math, high school math, or college math, all tested and proven instructional videotapes just for you. If you need top grades in math, Math Made Easy tutoring tapes are a must. Used by educators all over America. It's like having your own professional tutor at your side. Follow the thousands of students who have gained confidence and have prepared for A's in math. Select the tapes you need. Call now for details and a free brochure. Dial 1-800-MATH-143. Parents or grandparents, now is the time to help a student in your family. Mom, I got an A. That's great. Math Made Easy tutoring tapes are guaranteed. Call now for more information. Dial 1-800-MATH-143. That's 1-800-M-A-T-H-143. If there's racing at the track, there's racing on KDOC. Every night, Wednesday through Sunday at 8 p.m., catch all the day's racing action from Santa Anita with all the stats and results from each race. Not just the stretch drive, not just the highlights, all the races, all of the race from the gate to the finish line. So tune in each night, Wednesday through Sunday at 8 p.m. to 56 KDOC, your station for horse racing. On the outside, my private friends, please pause, Paul and Marla are going to hit the wire together. Welcome back, everybody. It's Wally George here, your fearless leader. And here sitting next to me, bright-eyed at this wee hour of the morning, is Jeff Nabell, co-owner. Are you owner or co-owner? Co-owner. Co-owner <clears throat> of Dos Amigos. Now, you may think that that's a Mexican restaurant. <laughs> Actually, it is. But <laughs> it could be a Mexican restaurant. There is one called Dos Amigos. Is it really? Yeah, we occasionally get a call from, uh, from a uh, customer uh, looking for some Mexican food, and we take his order. <laughs> we don't deliver them. <laughs> <laughs> Why did you call that thing Dos Amigos? Uh, but by the way, what he does sell in Santa Ana is used or 
people aren't going to say used anymore. Uh, previously owned? Previously owned cars. Uh, Why would you call that Dos Amigos? Because you, you two guys are friends? and uh, uh, Yeah, my father-in-law and I are, are co-owners, and we are best of buddies. Uh, and and uh, aside from that, years ago, where two friends make a deal uh, is a nice place to go buy a car. So it, it kind of fit well. Dos Amigos, Dos and of course amigos. you all know what Amigos uh, uh, means, don't you folks at home? It means jerk. <laughs> no, only kidding. Two jerks. Oh, two jerks. <laughs> only kidding. It means friend. Two friends. Two friends. And we are Dos Amigos. That's right. Good to see you, Jeff. Thank you. It's, I'm uh, glad to be back on your show. I wanted to ask you how things were going and how the rains have affected uh, business. Uh, the rains have been very detrimental to business. Uh, In general, how, all over the place? All over the place, Wally. Uh, however, I keep thinking about the uh, people that have really had some rain problems. Homes washed away, cars washed away. So I, I really can't complain. You know, but you, you guys have some uh, some very, very good cars over there at Dos Amigos on Harbor Boulevard. Yes. In Santa Ana. Yeah, we are pretty proud of our inventory. We're very selective in terms of what we buy. Uh, we, we do a lot of... Uh, uh, we have a, a vast assortment. We have Cadillacs, Lincolns, um, uh, Mustang convertibles, Camaros, uh, caravans, Blazers, uh, and we're pretty picky about what we buy. You sell to people who maybe couldn't afford to buy a car anywhere else. Uh, credit's not a problem, Wally, uh, at Dos Amigos. Would you even sell a car to me? Absolutely. <laughs> Absolutely. <laughs> but certainly not to you, Hoshi. <laughs> yeah, cr credit's never a problem. A and we do price all our cars on the windshield. They, they, so. they have a sign out there in front, we will sell a car to anyone but Hoshi Modelli. <laughs> <laughs> Only kidding. <laughs> Hoshi could come in with cash and buy the whole place out. I bet. Loaded with cash. I bet. So, uh, uh, but now, because of, of the, the torrential rainstorms and so forth, are you making the prices even better than ever? Uh, yeah, the prices, you know, uh, again, we're, we do price every one of our cars on the windshield, so that allows uh, consumers to come by, and, and of course they're welcome to take the cars to the mechanics. Uh, I've been in the car business for 20 years in a new car store, so I didn't evolve out of a uh, wholesale um, industry. I evolved out of a new car store, so consequently, our, our, we do safeties and smogs and have compression checks done before the cars are put on display. Some, uh, uh, it used to be in the old days where uh, there were some unscrupulous car dealers, uh, used car dealers, uh, and uh, boy, I'll tell you, a, a friend of mine about 10 or 15 years ago, 15 maybe, bought a car. I will not name the dealer. I don't even think he's in business anymore, but it was one of those famous as-is cars, drove it six blocks, and the whole engine fell apart. And they said, well, that's showbiz. <laughs> well, you know, we understand that, you know, used cars are used cars, and uh, we try to do the best job we could in terms of making sure they're good cars and that they'll last a long, long time. Uh, but we do have two technicians on duty at all times, and our customers are always welcome to come back and uh, take care of little things that need to be done if they do have a problem. Uh, that's not a problem at our store at all. Why do you think used car dealers ha have taken such a bad rap over the years? Well, simply is just because what you said, there have been and there still may be uh, dealers out there that... Crooks! Crooks don't really care about the public. However, you know, I, there's a lot of things that I won't do in our store. I won't sell, for example, extended service policies. Yeah. It's a profit center for a lot of used car dealers. New car dealers sell them, but they're manufacturers' extended service policies. Used car dealers sell them, uh, but they're not manufacturers. They're M-I-C, K-E-Y, M-O-U-S-C. <laughs> yeah. and, and consequently, when your car breaks down, the, uh, the warranty company comes out, and the inspector comes out and says, well, that problem was caused by something else, so we're not going to honor the warranty. Yeah. And I'm not going to deal with that kind of problem with my customers. I want my customers to be happy. Uh, I don't, although it's a profit center for a lot of stores, I'm more concerned about a happy customer. Uh, I make enough money to pay my household bills and pay the bills at the store, uh, and I have happy customers get a lot of referrals. Is this man ever going to stop talking? No. <laughs> this guy goes on forever. I keep looking for a place to jump in. There's nowhere to jump in. <laughs> this this motor mouth keeps great. going, you know. <laughs> uh, gosh, it's the uh, Jeff Nobel show. I thought he'd never stop, Hoshi. I thought he was going to sit here for half an hour. Okay. 
Well, I think we got to go. Right. <laughs> You've talked your way out of it. <laughs> Thank you. I'm out of show business. Oh, well. Uh, no, you'd be good at it. At <laughs> because you can just talk forever. Oh, I'm a self Like me. You can talk forever. He, he's a good guy, too. I, he, he really is. At Dos Amigos. And what's the address again? Uh, 1013 North Harbor. Uh, our phone number, if I may, yes, is 714-554-1250. Um, uh, and again, while like, credit is not a problem, we reestablish a lot of credit for people and get them back on the right road. <laughs> 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 when you call up, please do not ask Jeff for a, uh, a bean burrito and uh, four tacos to go. Because I'll probably take your order. <laughs> <laughs> You'll never see it again. Dos Amigos, if you can't remember the number, you listed in the, in the phone book. Yes. Under Dos Amigos auto sale. Cars. Auto sale. Auto sale. Yeah, be, be sure to say auto sale so they don't give you the, the, uh, the Mexican place, uh, the Mexican restaurant. Dos Amigos Auto Sales in Santa Ana. Thanks, Jeff. Thank and you, Wally. Get that man out of here! <laughs> Live talk, personal dreams. Try them now. Find out how. Call toll free. Women's fantasies, wild desires. Dial 1 800 934 9100. Party live, one on one. Dial 1 800 934 9100. Get personal contacts for personal dreams. Dial 1 800 934 9100. Fantasies, live talk, personal dreams. Try them now. Find out how. Call toll free. Dial 1 800 934 9100. It's also over 18 years. You have IRS tax problems? Then stop worrying, my friend, and call my friend, John Escobar of EJM & Associates in Irvine. I can assure you they are the very best. Offer and compromise, release of garnishments, release of levies, and liens can be accomplished with the help of EJM & Associates. They specialize in the handling of all income tax returns, individual, corporation, and partnership. Mention Wally George for a free appointment and consultation and an autographed picture. Hi, I'm Bob Vila, and I'm here to show you a great new hand tool from Sears. What you working on, Jeff? Well, I'm fixing this wheel, but these pliers make it really difficult. I mean, it takes two hands to adjust them, and even then it doesn't fit quite right, so I end up rounding off this nut. Try RoboGrip instead of those slip joint pliers. With RoboGrip's unique design, you only need one hand to use them. Just a simple squeeze of the spring-loaded handle, and the jaws automatically adjust for a perfect fit. RoboGrip makes any job easier. It's perfect for snugging or loosening bolts and gets you into tighter places than ordinary pliers. RoboGrip even works on pipes. And you know you can trust the quality because it's a craftsman tool, America's number one name and tool. And remember, when you buy from Sears, your satisfaction is guaranteed or your money back. For rush delivery, get your Sears charge or other credit card ready and call 1-800-982-0600. That's 1-800-982-0600. Or send check or money order to the address on your screen. Call 1-800-982-0600 right now. So I guess that's going to do it for our show tonight. Thank you so much for being with us. I appreciate all the great mail that, that you've been sending in, snapshots and things. I love to read your mail. I, every day I go into my massive office and read your mail. So, so write to me. Oh, no, I'll, I'm not doing that now. <laughs> we'll do the address in a minute. <laughs> uh, and uh, watch me six nights a week, Monday through Friday at this time, Saturday nights uh, from 11 until 12, the original Hot Seat Show, as we tell it the way it really is. Now we can have the address. Wally George, P.O. Box 787, Hollywood, California, 90078. Do you, do you want a free autograph picture, personally autographed to you? Let me know, and I'll get one out to you as soon as we possibly can. We have a big backlog, so please be patient, and we'll get it out to you as soon as we can. If you have a picture of yourself, send it in. I'll put you on my bulletin board. And also, I'd love to hear your comments and uh, hear what's on your mind. So write to me, Box 787, Hollywood, 90078. Got to go now. God bless you all. God bless America. found a great family restaurant right here in Garden Grove. It's Smiles Family Restaurant at 12001 Euclid in Garden Grove. You will smile when you see that great breakfast, lunch, and dinner they have there. True, delicious family cooking. Smile.